Okay, so I will be explaining uh, the Peterson solution in a slightly different way now. In the last video, I showed the code for uh, ith process. So one thing I wanted to make more clear is that this code is for process i, right? So let me name process i process 0, right? Instead of i, I am just going to write 0. And similarly, uh, there is another process called process 1 right and this do while loops are actually simply representing the nature of this task that uh, both the codes can be repeated that in other words both the programs or processes can enter their critical sections multiple times or can want to enter their critical sections multiple times so for example if it's for process 0 I'm going to change every i to 0 in every j because now I'm assuming that process j is process 1 so I'm going to change every j to 1 right I'm going to change this j to 1 I'm going to change this j to 1 similarly this will become the critical section of process p0 and similar this this i is going to be changed to 0 and this is going to be the remainders remainder section and similarly in the other example wherever I encountered an i which was replaced by zero I'm going to change that because for this context now I is one so I'm going, going to change this zero or which was previously I I could I could change it to J or I can change this to one because now J is one right similarly if turn for the context of process zero if turn is being given by process zero uh, one uh, in other words process 0 is giving the value uh, of 1 to variable turn so in the context of process 1 process 1 will be doing the opposite thing it will be giving uh, turn uh, 0 to the, uh, uh, the value of 0 to variable turn similarly uh, I'm seeing a 1 here and a 1 here I will be looking at a 0 here so process 1 is talking about the so you can say that process 0 is talking about the other process in this line so similarly process 1 is going to talk about the other process in its line and in this in, in the context of process 1 the other process is process 0 so everywhere you see 1 in this context you're going to see 0 here everywhere you see a 0 here you're going to see a 1 here so similarly uh, in this context the context of process 0 process 0 is changing the value of its respective flag to false similarly process 1 is also going to do the same thing because the entry sections and the exit sections normally follow the same pattern but there is no constraint on the critical sections uh, how the cr critical sections are going to behave they can be different and for the sake of this example I'm also going to do the same that I'm just going to assume that the critical section of process p1 takes uh, somewhere about four lines and uh, uh, to execute and the critical section of process p0 takes about uh, let's say five lines to execute right so you can uh, I can change the example to whatever I like because uh, the critical sections can be unpredictable so you can have like uh, if else statements in critical sections and as they execute you can never know how much code is going to be executed right so having done this I'm going to further tell you that these are times on which these lines are being executed right so I'm going to assume that this line executes first or maybe both of these execute at the same time flag 1 equal to 2 flag 0 is equal to 2 indicating that process 0 is interested in going into the critical section because all of these three lines are uh, part of the the entry section of uh, to the critical section similarly process 1 is also interested by at second number 2 by declaring flag 1 equal to 2 process 1 is saying that it is interested in going into its critical section right so what happens to this line so I'm assuming for this uh, example that at second number three exactly at second number three turn equal to one 
or turn equal to zero, they cannot happen. This is changing the value of the same variable, right? So I'm going to assume that this is the case, right? I'm going to assume that turn is equal to zero, the line turn equal to zero due to several, uh, there, you know, there are so many reasons why this line could be executing at second number three because of the operating system scheduling the processes to CPU in a different manner. Process one, zero is being scheduled in a different way. Process one is being scheduled in a different way. So somehow it occurs that turn one in process zero executes at second number three and turn zero in process one executes at second number four, right? You must remember that I told you that critical section solution must uh, offer mutual exclusion. Mutual exclusion means that if critical section is being executed here of process zero, process one, which is also a coordinating process uh, for this scenario and process zero and process one are competing for the same resources, it, sh it should be impossible to run the critical section of process P1 while the critical section of process P0 is being executed. So both of these, th these things being done in parallel should be impossible. This is what mutual exclusion means. So I'm going to show you here that it actually, the Peterson solution actually holds this property. So le let's, let's look at this line. So when at, at second number four, uh, because turn equal to one was done at second number three, on second number four, just right about the start of second number four, the value of turn is going to be received by process zero as one because it set the value of one, uh, turn to one by itself. So the value of turn will definitely be one at this line. Similarly, uh, at second number four, turn is being given to zero, but right now it, at second number four, just because at the start of second number four, turn was one, this next line is going to receive turn equal to one, right? So, but what is the value of flag of one? Because now process zero is checking for the value of flag for the second process, which is process one. So just before this line, line number four, at line number at second number two process one had changed the value of its flag to true right so this is true and this is true therefore what is going to happen this program program zero or process one is going to be stuck at second number four at this line it cannot go any further both the conditions are true it is going to simply keep on spinning into this loop as long as the condition condition remains true. So it can only come out of its waiting unless uh, one of the conditions becomes false. Because this line is executed once, this is also going to ex be executed the next time because the condition was true. I'm just copying this line here. Similarly, at second number four, turn is being given to zero by process one. The value of turn is at second number four becomes zero. So at second number five, process zero receives the value of turn as what? Zero, right? Because process one had changed the value of turn to zero at second number four. At second number five, the process zero is receiving the value of turn as zero. That's why this condition will become false. The second part of this condition of while statement become false. On the next line, this loop is not going to be executed. Process zero is coming out of this loop on the next line. In other words, process zero can enter its critical section. But what happens here? On second number five, uh, process one receives turn equal to zero and flag of zero is still true because process zero had turned its flag to true. It is still true. So, because both of the conditions are true here, I'm just going to copy it to the next line because next line is going to do the same thing because both the conditions are true. While loop is going to spin at least once and it is going to, you know, uh, repeat itself. So, 
on the other on the other hand process zero has entered its critical section it is gone inside its critical section happily on the other on the other hand process one will be uh, repeating its uh, because throughout the critical section the values of flag or turn are never going to be changed and since the values are not going to be changed this line is going to repeat itself so i'm going to simply copy and paste this line for as long as uh, process 0 is in its critical section so at second number 11 process 0 changes the value of its flag to false this is the change which is required by this while loop to break its iterations so as soon as flag 0 becomes false while loop is not going to repeat itself so at second number 11 it happens on second number 12 so it is going to repeat just once more and on second number 12 just right after second number 11 on the start of second number 12 this line is going to receive the value of flag 0 as false so as soon as it gets the value of flag 0 false it comes out of its uh, looping and it enters its critical section right so uh, the rest is i think uh, uh, understandable because now you can see the red area here the critical section of p0 and the red area here with the critical section of p1 are mutually exclusive on the timeline right critical section of p0 is being run from second number six to second number ten and critical section of process one is executed from second number 13 to second number 16 even though they had reached the start of critical section at exactly the same time we have implemented a mechanism which is called the solution to the critical section problem in such a way that both uh, that one of them gets the chance to enter the critical section and the other one is kept in waiting so the, all of these lines are called waiting so uh, process one is continuously waiting 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 and suddenly process zero says okay i'm done i'm coming out this is the exit section of crit critical section and it gets the notification and it enter its uh, critical section so i hope you understood the peterson's solution for handling critical section problem it gives you some insight about what uh, the problem is even so you even get an insight about what the problem initially was and the representation with which i have shown here i think it helps uh, more uh, to understand if you have any questions you can ask contact me right